So I am going to begin with giving you a 40,000 feet view of, of mobility, of future of mobility. What does it look like? I am not going to get too technical, uh, but I am going to just, just paint for you a picture of what we are seeing along with some examples, uh, on, on the, especially on the heavy mobility side. So the subject of mobility is like the game of cricket. Everybody has a view. Just like in India, if you talk about cricket, everybody has a view. People have even advised to Sachin Tendulkar as to how to bat the next time when he goes down there. Likewise, mobility is also interesting because it touches everyone. And um, so therefore, I'm sure it's going to evoke a lot of response. So please get ready with your questions uh, so that we can make this session as interactive as possible. And uh, I think uh, one thing about mobility is whenever we talk about future mobility, the topic gets overshadowed by electric vehicles. Uh, that's sad because electric vehicles is just one part of future of mobility. One small part, maybe 15 to 20 percent. And there's a lot of other, other um, aspects and imperatives about mobility. And that is what we all are going to ta try to touch upon. So let me to start with, we all know the demand for mobility shall continue to grow despite the pandemic. Pandemic gave us a thought in between that, oh my, we can do things sitting at home. We don't probably need mobility. Uh, but that was not right. The demand for mobility continues to grow. By 2030, you will have 123 million vehicles on the market uh, compared to 81 million vehicles uh, today in, in, the, in the global arena. Out of this, 23 million units are, are built by India, of which 5.6 million are exported. India's automotive industry is about, it, it's one of the pioneering industries. It is 7.1% of our GDP in size. And uh, if, if you look at, uh, by value, it's about 225 billion and 8% of exports is the share of automotive industry. We are the largest tractor manufacturer in the world. We are the second largest bus manufacturer in the world. And we are the third largest commercial vehicle manufacturer in the world. And I think as far as two wheelers is concerned, we are again the top most number one. So, so the Indian automotive industry is of prime importance to the country. And why this need for mobility will grow? Because the aspirations of India, aspirations of countries, especially the developing world, are going to grow from a $3 trillion economy to $9 to $10 trillion economy by 2030, a $35 trillion when India dreams to be at 100, uh, which means the per capita income growing from $2,200 now to about $25,000 per capita income by 2047 as India turns 100, and about $1.4 trillion of investments are taking place in infrastructure, which will lead to better connectivity, greater urbanization, and so on and so forth. So the need for, for more mobility is very, very clear. But the key point is that the future, of, the future growth of mobility will be very dissimilar to what you have seen in the last 50, 60 years. It would be far beyond numbers. I think we talk about numbers all the time. It's not going to be numbers. It's going to be a lifetime transformation. On the back of several drivers which are taking shape, one is the mobility trends, other is the geopolitical trends. So mobility trends typically, as we all know, alternate energy, new transport concepts, I'm going to touch upon these a little bit, digitalization, autonomous vehicles, connectivity, 5G, and then now 6G coming in, uh, new business models backed by data, data privacy and changing regulations. And on the other end, you have global trends where there are uh, trade tensions, there is energy pricing is becoming a problem. It is left to the whims and fancies of some countries. Carbon borders are going to become a reality. So therefore, net zero is going to be, play a huge role and convergence of industries. Today, we call ourselves automotive industry, healthcare, education, and what all, what not. But I think going forward, we all are going to become technology industries, technology companies. And of course, the rebalancing of global value chains, which I spoke about yesterday a bit. So all this is going to make a huge difference. But the key driver is the fast going and compelling narrative of sustainability. And what are the, so we are talking, when we talk of sustainability, we are talking of 
safety, circularity, reuse, re resource efficiency, net zero ambitions, diversity and inclusion. How do you have everyone um, in the bottom of the pyramid also into the game? How green finance is going to play a role? And, uh, and, and some of these things are going to really drive the future of sustainable mobility. And the good news here is that that a number of initiatives by the government, uh, proactive initiatives of the government are helping this cause, like the National Electric Mobility Plan, Automotive Mission Plan, which started in 2016, goes up to 2026, which is basically to drive the growth for the industry. Then production linked incentives, which have come in, uh, basically incentivizing uh, battery technology, battery chemistry, hydrogen fuel cells, ADAS systems, ESDM manufacturing and so on, so on and so forth. And then of course the vehicle scrappage policy which will help us to reduce pollution because the vehicles which are on the road are not even BS1 or 2 or 3. And we are today talking of BS4 and 5 vehicles uh, on the road. So I think that's going to play a huge role. And then finally the NCAP which is the national crash testing uh, which is going to become uh, a star rating is going to be given to every vehicle in terms of its safety standards. So I think these are some of the shifts which we see very, very clearly happening. But the story of future mobility is not just about growth. And as I said, it's a lifetime transformation. What is that transformation? I think the transformation we are talking about is something we provide, a product which we provide is 100% safe. Never does a person die because of the vehicle on the roads. That's the first one. The second is how we can be 100% fossil free and how we can be 100% more productive. I mean, as you know, vehicles today are working at less than 50% efficiencies. I mean, how do we really change that, that, when, uh, that, uh, that uh, conundrum? How do we get it to 100% becoming more efficient? And so therefore, these are the seven trends which we believe are going to really uh, define uh, the, the future mobility. Uh, one is the alternate energy carriers, which could be electric vehicles, which could be combustion engines, um, vehicles with uh, biofuels, LNG, uh, uh, and of course, uh, there would be hydrogen fuel cells, and there could be hydrogen in fuel itself. So four different pathways which we see uh, for alternate energy carriers. Then of basically automation and new technology. Uh, and third is of course new transport concepts. Now this is very critical. New transport concepts are basically going to define the hub to hub transport and the last mile connectivity. And how, uh, how in hub to hub, what are the changes coming in? How in the last mile connectivity, what are the changes coming in? We're going to talk about some of those. And then of course connectivity and digitalization. I talked about new business models and opportunities. This whole ecosystem of new mobility is going to create a whole new economy, a completely new economy which we never thought of. I mean, we had typical aftermarket. So you will have uh, uh, sales of cameras, you will have sales of drones, you will have, you will have uh, fintech models to collect money. Uh, you have from the fast tags to you, something similar to fast tags you will have on various vehicles you have ride sharing. So you will have a lot of new business models and whole new economy is going to get generated. Uh, it is not a zero sum game. So it's not transitioning from traditional mobility to a new mobility, which is just say you add something. It's going to be an exponential uh, ch game changer. And of course, I have, I will not take too much uh, of your time on this, but I think this is something, the focus area on people climate and resources and as to how do we, when it comes to people, how do we realize our full potential? Can mobility play that role of realizing the full potential of people? I mean, that could be a larger purpose of organization. How can we create prosperity for people through mobility? And I think this is something which, which we, we can talk about at length. Of course, then we are talking of engagement with society. We are talking of limiting use of materials and substances of concern and so on and so forth. Yeah, but I think the three capabilities, I mean, technology apart, but three capabilities that will enable us to get to the future state of mobility, very, very clear. I, and I talked about it a little bit yesterday, is the partnership is the new leadership when it comes to this transformation. 
so uh, you cannot achieve all new aspects of new mobility by yourself so therefore you have to partner i will give you some examples uh, domain partnership sectoral partnership and value chain partnership how how we can conduct those the other is overcoming internal challenges typically we organizations are built on certain ways of working which have been challenged thankfully by the pandemic very siloed way of working keeping information to ourselves everything seems to be confidential all of this is going to change dramatically and i think how sharing of information and internal ways of working are going to change is going to be the key and embracing accelerated innovation journey is is going to be the uh, something which we talked about yesterday a bit that how the the era of accelerated innovation and how each company is trying to really embrace this reality so we believe these three things uh, along with technology are going to really uh, get us to the future change of state of mobility let me talk about volvo a bit i will just take a few minutes there uh, in the last 3 years these are the 10 partnerships we have signed uh, this could not i mean we could not have believed it 5 years before so we are we are partnered with samsung for battery technology with aurora on autonomous vehicle solutions on ssb for green steel uh with with design work on hydro again on hydrogen volvo group and nvidia again on autonomous solutions isuzu on on business model partnership cell centric is a joint venture with daimler which is our competitor and uh, there we are going to do hydrogen fuel cells and of course uh, then we are da with daimler and triton to build uh, uh, charging infrastructure in europe we planning about close to 2000 charging points in europe so these are some of the partnerships partnerships across the entire transport ecosystem where we are looking at city and transport governance urban planning people and lifestyle and i think these are some of the things which the new mobility will have to address otherwise it will be more of the same otherwise what we will see cities congested earlier with diesel and petrol vehicles and maybe tomorrow with electric vehicles and that is something which we do not want we want a completely planned uh, mobility and of course partnerships across value chain and this here we are working very closely with our customers and just about 2 months back we we are the first company in india and probably in the world along with our partners tvs group where we have la launched green castings the first green castings in the world have been launched from india and um, and that's something which is very very big so that's again partnership across uh, the value chain and of course with academia we have partnership with indian institute of science iit delhi and then we have a startup ecosystem um, where which has been driven by uh, a property called campex where we are driving partnerships across the value chain for innovation yeah and of course this is something which i want to spend couple of minutes on this has been the most important part of this shift is the culture transformation and um, we we embarked on this journey about 3 uh, years ago basically the idea was that what does this 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 change mean to us people what are the behaviors which we need to shed and what are the behaviors which we need to adopt in our company what 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 does transparency mean to us what does trust mean to us if you want to collaborate you need to be transparent and you need to be trustworthy so i think this was something very important uh, breaking silos so this is something which we have embarked upon and i believe this is one of the most defining aspects of of uh, transformation in this entire journey and this journey has started for i think most companies and if you look at the science based targets which are there only 116 companies pledged to these targets in 100 uh, in in 2015 and now we are we have close to 3000 companies who have committed to science based targets even if you look at across the world uh, this is uh, china accounts for 24% of the overall and um, emissions us about 12% india about 7% all these countries have committed to net zero journey clearly 78% of the world in terms of emissions have committed to a sincere net zero commitment so this is for real 
the future is not tomorrow future is today it's happening already and i think uh, the net zero journey is becoming very very serious fundamental and this is a little dangerous slide this is not uh, this shows that if we continue as per our current policies our emissions will go to 110 or 120 uh, as 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 the world if we pledge to targets which are on the pathway of 2.1 to 2.4 degrees we are going to be at about 90% of current emissions uh, if 100 is the is today's level and if we go below 2 2% we will reach at about 50% of of the emissions which we have today and it is only the 1.5% pathway which most companies are following large companies are following which will lead us to getting emissions to about 20% of the current levels so this is a very important one and this is something which which will keep everybody awake you know because if we don't do this we are headed for disaster so i mean this is for volvo group just a very quick one this is where we were in 2020 uh, on top there this has been our journey and we believe we will become net zero as a company uh, along with all our products all our processes everything we do net zero by 2040 and that that's the vision we have taken and uh, and uh, and these are some of the slides which i'll show you on battery electric vehicles on hydrogen fuel cells on vehicles with ic engines um, but with clean fuels and of course automation is part of our lives already and ai is going to play a big role 5g and 6g around the corner they are going to be really connectivity is going to enable a fully connected world in a much much faster way and i think uh, you will find that autonomous solutions are already happening in some mines in some confined areas we are already doing this and we all know that digitalization in business has accelerated by 7 to 10x in the last few years i mean what would have taken us 7 years has happened in one year and i think this is whether it is e-commerce 10 years in 8 weeks e-learning 15x uh, more courses enrolled telehealth 50 to 175 times so digitalization is redefining every sector of economy and i think this is happening for this also and this is leading to a host of new business models including parking management cargo aggregation data insights ride share and all of that yeah then i th this is something which i talked about confined areas is an attractive use case for auto driving so ports mine campuses construction sites and this is one of our vehicles which is completely autonomous which is working in a mine and uh, completely autonomous uh, along with our customer partner is is run already a fairly good number of hours and is doing exceedingly well and um, of course areas to address is people acceptance liability and regulations cyber security big one and traffic safety these are four areas which mean to each one of us and therefore i will end this by saying that come let's come together to shape the world we all want to live in and i think that's a chance that's the future so thank you very much